Welcome to the Generic Tech Support YouTube channel. Like and subscribe for more content. With Granite XP dead, I wanted to share something that I think could be helpful for anybody that still wants to use Windows XP. See, one of the big problems with Windows XP at this point is finding the Windows updates. And yeah, there are projects out there that will claim to have all of the updates, but most of them don't. You see, there's about 950 updates for Windows XP. If you look at all versions of Windows XP, going from Windows XP, the 32-bit base standard version, all the way to the 2019 version of the point of sale system for Windows XP, there's over 900 updates for this operating system. And while not all updates were designed to run specifically on the original Windows XP professional standard license, those updates that were designed for the point of sale 2019 system will still work on the XP system that was from 2001, meaning that you can secure the operating system to the point of really 2020, which is about 20 years or 19 years of updates for Windows XP. And when you start to think of that number, then you realize that 950 updates really isn't that many considering we're talking about 19 years of time. However, getting those updates can be kind of a problem, which is something we could see here in the Microsoft world underneath the Microsoft catalog. Understanding that Microsoft's catalog is still available to download all of your Windows XP updates. And if you look at the number here, we have over a thousand results for Windows XP. One of the major problems with this website, however, is that it doesn't use API. It is heavy, heavy JavaScript. Meaning that there's really no way to scrape the data to download all the data at one time. It will require some interaction or intervention to do this. Presumably, if you're running XP, there's a reason why. And chances are that reason requires the updates that were on the previous system. So what I'm going to teach you today is how to get those updates. What we're going to do is we're going to start with our Windows XP system. Now we're going to pretend that this particular XP system has been used in business for a long period of time. And as such, it's still necessary for us to use it because maybe it links to a specific manufacturing device or a piece of equipment which would deem it necessary to still be running. You'll get a lot of people out there that'll argue the point of this, which is that you shouldn't have this on your internal infrastructure because it becomes a security risk. The truth is, is that at this point, XP is no longer a security risk. The reason behind that is because everything that was released for it has already been either patched or somebody has created some kind of software to actually secure that particular issue. Then as far as the communication is concerned, as long as you don't have SMB1 turned on on your internal infrastructure, this thing really can't communicate with anything anyway. Generally speaking, the only reason you'll find XP at this point in your infrastructure is because there's some kind of manufacturing equipment that requires it in order to be used, to which all you would have to do is just take this particular machine and that piece of equipment and segregate it on the network and you wouldn't have to worry about anything else. Now there's ways to create weights inside of Active Directory. So if you have multiple domain controllers on your infrastructure, you can actually modify the weight of a specific DC and then define specifically for this particular operating system to only use that per that one domain control. And if you use VLANing and network segmenting, then realistically that Windows XP system is no more of a threat than anything else on the infrastructure. And quite frankly, in a lot of ways, it's a lower threat because it can't communicate to everything. It would only be able to communicate with what you had set up, either with port forwarding, port configuration, segregation, segmenting, or... Um, even just setting weights for network uh, communication on the infrastructure. Let's jump back in here and now take a look at how we're gonna do this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into my computer, we're gonna go into C drive, we're gonna specifically create a new folder. I'm gonna call it tools like I do with everything. I'm gonna open up the tools directory. I'm gonna choose a new one and do new and do a folder. We're gonna say uh, current updates. We're gonna open up current updates. Now at this point, we're gonna to go to start, we're gonna do command prompt, and we're gonna change directory to go to the current updates directory. So it's a CD backslash, and then CD space, uh, C colon backslash tools backslash, and then current. So we can just do C and then hit the tab key to autofill. And we'll just hit enter. And then we're gonna do CLS to clear out the uh, data there. So we start with a fresh terminal screen. So once we're at the actual location where we want to run the command, it's simply just WMIC space QFE space list space full space forward slash format colon, then the format you want to use. Like for instance, we're going to use HTable first. So HTable is going to create us an HTML file. So we'll do HTable space greater than space C tools current updates, updates.html. And at this point, if I hit enter, it's going to create an actual updates list HTML file. Now, 
that's great and all for us to easily read it. However, we want to create an actual spreadsheet of these updates and make it easy for us to manage. So that way we could download the necessary updates. So that way we could future proof our XP system for our manufacturer. Now to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to just simply hit the up arrow. So that way we get this to recreate. We're going to change HTML to CSV. We're going to go back and we're going to change H table to CSV as well. And at that point, we should really hit enter and create a CSV file of the exact same thing that we have now in our HTML, which means that we can have the ability to use Excel to open this up. So we have a listing of all the KB numbers as well as the URL details as to where to get these updates. That means at this point, what we could do is we can open up the updates.html. Now I don't have Excel installed on this particular machine, but we'll just open up updates.html. And in here, we're going to see the updates that are currently applied to the system. We're going to see a hotfix ID. Now you'll note that not every single file is going to have a hotfix ID in the hotfix ID. However, you can see service pack in effect, and this will have the individual KB numbers associated with each one of the updates. So if we look here, we'll see update security fix, and we'll see the KB number associated with it. Now, all of the updates that we see here is the full WSUS offline patch for Windows XP. And you'll note that this does not include many updates. There's a strong possibility on your machine if you're using it from the days of XP on your infrastructure and you actually have the updates still installed on it, that you probably have a much longer list than what we have here. Unfortunately, this is where the caveat to Microsoft Catalog kind of comes into play. While yes, you can download the updates, you have to do them as an individual each update at a time. The reason behind that is because this is JavaScript, it's not an API, so you can't create an API script to just download these things one at a time. You can, however, create a wget script on Windows XP to download the updates. Although I'll be honest with you, you'd be better off using Windows 11 to download them with that same wget script, only because of the certificate required to download them correctly and because Internet Explorer is no longer supported for the Microsoft Catalog. So if you try to access this particular site directly from XP, it will fail. Ultimately, this will help you download the updates. You'll have to put them in a repository off of your actual infrastructure that the XP machine has access to. And if it doesn't, you could obviously burn them to a CD or you could put them on a thumb drive and plug that directly into your XP system. So this is a start of a list that I started to put together a while back for Granite XP. This contains all the KBs associated with the actual Granite builds. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom, you can see that there's 951 updates for it. So obviously doing this manually would take a really long time since it is JavaScript, I have no API to actually pull the data back. However, with that said, you can grab the KB numbers and you can get the access to the actual executable name. So in other words, once you go to the KB location, like for instance, if we copy this one particular KB number and we jump on the catalog site, we can see listed here, we have Windows XP, but we have Windows XP a couple times. We have the 64-bit edition. We have the XP, just the regular security update. And we have the one for the embedded version of Windows XP. You really want to stick with the flavor of Windows XP you're currently running if it's available. If the KB doesn't exist for your particular machine, but you need that specific KB, for instance, the embedded versus the non-embedded, you can run the embedded version, assuming that you have the modification to the registry set on your Windows XP system. Once you figure out which one you need, what you're gonna do is you're gonna click on the download link. At this point, you're gonna see that there is an actual link here for a download. This is the link you wanna copy. So you'd wanna right click on this and copy this particular URL. Then go back to your Excel spreadsheet where you have your KB numbers listed and paste the URL. At which point you're gonna go back and you're gonna grab the update ID, which you can see here. You'll hit copy and make sure you paste the update ID association with the actual KB number. So you should have the KB, the link to the catalog location, and then the update ID itself. Once you have that data collected for all the KB numbers that you're looking for, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go to eternallyboard.org and find the MISC wget project, which is what we see here. You'll notice here that XP support was dropped in version 1.20. That means if you wanna try this on XP, you wanna use 1.19.4. However, I could save you the headache in just letting you know that if you download this package and you attempt to use it on the actual Microsoft Catalog site, it will download the actual configuration. However, when you go to actually install it, it's going to fail the install. Specifically, the error message you'll get is that it's not a valid Windows 32 application. 
That's because there seems to be a bug with the actual website for the catalog site when you use an unsupported or out of date operating system to attempt to download the update. It still will work, but it fails when you go to install the actual update. Once you have your wget package downloaded to either a Windows 11 or Windows 10 system, jump into that system and copy the downloaded wget.exe directly either into your system32 folder or you can copy it into a location. Like for instance, I'm gonna use tools catalog in order for us to download the updates for Windows XP onto our Windows 11 machine. At which point I also created a new text document and then renamed it automated XP update downloader.bat. And the reason why is because I'll show you how to script this so you don't have to do each individual download one at a time. Since Windows 11 actually mimics some of Linux, we could actually right click in here and do open in terminal. And we're gonna get a terminal. Now note, this is PowerShell and this is not gonna work for what we need. So we're gonna have to do CMD and hit enter. And that's gonna change it to command line instead of PowerShell. So now we could do CLS. So that way we could go back to just a base terminal box. And at this point, this is where we're gonna to start to do our configuration for our wget. In our terminal itself, just so we could test this first, we'll do wget, we'll put a URL specifically from our listing of XP updates. And we're gonna pipe that to C Tools Catalog XP Updates KB01. And I'm sure you're gonna ask, well, why wouldn't you retain the original KB numbers? And that's really a preference. If you retain the original KB numbers when you do the download, it'll help you retain knowledge as specifically as to which update is which. However, if you do that, that means when you script it for the installation process to automate the install, you're gonna to have to define each individual KB number during the process. If there's not a lot of KBs available, then go for it. But if you have 951 updates, I would suggest that you go in series from one to 951 to do the updates themselves to save you the headache of having to type in each individual KB number. And once you're ready, what you'll do is you'll just hit enter on the keyboard to execute it. And if the system can find the path, it'll download. Now you'll notice on this, it says that the path cannot be specified or the path isn't specified or cannot find the specified path. And the reason why is because I didn't add the updates folder into the catalog location under C tools. And I wanted to showcase this because if you do this and you get a bunch of these error messages, don't think that there's anything wrong with the script necessarily. It's because the script itself for the wget command doesn't have the ability to create the folders. Now that I created the folder called XP updates, if I do the same command again and just hit enter, it will download the update directly to that folder. Once it finishes downloading, you should be able to just go into the XP updates and you'll see the rename. So it's KB01 as shown. So KB01, KB01, we could see the download, we could see the actual KB number, the location, how it was saved, and the date and time it was saved. Once you confirm that this works, what you'll do is you'll create your batch script. You'll add all the data that you want in there and you'll name your KBs associated correctly to whatever you want to use any kind of uniformity unless you want to use the actual KB numbers in which case you could just download these straight without adding the additional pipe at the end or the greater than symbol to send it to the other directory and download them directly to the catalog folder and it will download them based off of whatever the actual original name is but I will warn you that if you do this there's going to be quite a bit more work on the other end of the configuration when you go to install these on the XP system. At this point, we have all our updates downloaded and we've got them copied over to our XP machine and we need to install the updates. Obviously, if you have like hundreds of updates, you don't wanna do this manually because you'll be there all day. So you really wanna automate the process. On the one hand, you could create yourself a WSUS system internally on your infrastructure to still maintain and retain the original updates for your Windows XP system. At least as of 2024, you were still capable of downloading all the XP updates directly to WSUS, assuming WSUS was at least 2016 or older. Keep in mind, obviously, that you would need 2008 R2 or newer to support modern infrastructure. So really, 2008 R2 through 2016 server running WSUS should give you the ability to download all the updates needed for your Windows XP system. With that said, if you have now all the KBs downloaded into your XP updates folder from your previous machine and copied over to your Windows XP system, and you wanna execute the updates, there's two different formats that you have to look for. Unfortunately, in Windows XP, there was a cutoff. And when the cutoff took place, they changed the actual command logic to install an update. 
There's an old school version of doing it, and there's a new school version of doing it. The old school version of doing it is the forward slash quiet, no restart, passive, and then setting the log as forward slash log with the colon, and then the actual directory where you want to store the log file. The newer way to do it is dash F, dash U, dash Z, dash Q, space, and then you're going to tell it with the greater, uh, greater than symbol, specifically to store the updates in the update location. Specifically, I'm talking about the log file for the updates, right? Because you want to continue to log the update installation process to make sure the updates that you need for whatever process you have that still requires Windows XP to run correctly, you want to make sure you have those updates installed. And the best way to do that is to make sure that you create a log file. Windows XP does have C Windows Windows Update.log. You can access that, but once you modify the KB numbers, you may not get the output you look for. With that said, you can run the QFE command through the WMIC console, as we shown earlier in this video, and that will still output the KB numbers of whatever is installed on your system, regardless of what you name the EXE file. Once you determine which update command it is, because you'll see that you're gonna have probably about 50 or 60, maybe 100 updates that you're gonna have to manually download. Once you have them downloaded, you're gonna have to figure out specifically which update command logic works for that particular update, create the list based off of that information, and then execute it. And when this runs, it'll run all the updates without the requirement of a reboot. So once the updates are finished, at that point, I would put the shutdown command with the dash R for a restart to restart the system to finalize the installation of the updates. However, if you do that and you run it like this, you will not have to update and then reinstall, or rather re update and restart, update, restart, update, restart, like you would in the traditional Microsoft Windows uh, update configuration on Windows XP, which is how I was able to do this inside of our Windows XP configuration when I built the Granite package. I was able to install these in two different sets of updates because I knew that we had the prereqs and the postrecs. So the prereqs were the original updates that were required, and then anything that required those prereqs to be installed already, I ran as a second set of updates and just created two different scripts. The first script would run, it would reboot, and then you would run the second script and it would install the rest of the updates. Something that you could see here on your screen, which is the original build configuration for the Granite package, was the installation of the updates based off of XP and then a numerical value, and then the requirements. And these were all the prereqs that were required before we would run the second set of updates, which was the additional 950 some odd updates, which we could see here. And we can see that we also had the point of sale updates and we have the IE updates that were also included in the original Granite package. At which point, once you have all these updates installed on XP, just reboot it and at that point you're good to go. You're back at the exact point you were before you lost the system. This means if you take the time and you spend a little time to actually build this out correctly, you could really automate the process of Windows updates on XP and still continue to run the same build package that is required for your business to run if necessary. And obviously, if you're running XP and you think that you're going to install it and then you're going to just do the WSUS offline installer and then installs all the updates, as you can see, it really doesn't. 27 updates out of thousands is not all of the updates for our Windows XP. If there's any interest at all in all the KB numbers, I could provide those. I could throw them on the generic tech support website. You can feel free to grab them off of there. Just let me know down in the comments if there's any interest in that. And hopefully this helps anybody out that runs an older operating system that still needs access to the Windows updates for that particular OS in order to still run it in a corporate-based environment. Now, obviously this doesn't fix end of life. It is still an end of life operating system, but based on the limitations at this point of the OS, in my opinion, it's really no different than running anything else on your infrastructure. The likelihood of somebody hacking into your infrastructure to try to gain access into an XP machine is pretty much slim to none. And now that you know how to access all the Windows updates required for Windows XP to run correctly, you should be able to easily rebuild the system. And just in case anybody's curious, the oldest operating system still supported on the catalog site is Windows 2000. Hopefully you guys found this one helpful. Let me know down in the comments if there's anything that I could add to this. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching the Generic Tech Support YouTube channel. Find the content of this video at https generictechsupport.com forward slash hashtag channel.